motivation? Yeah, yeah. Can you come? Can you come here and help me? Please, please help me with my fitness goals, my health goals. Who is it? Is it motivation? Motivation's here. Yes. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Angie and that little guy in the background there, that's Eddie. He's my sidekick, but you don't see him very often because he's kind of camera shy. He's a bull mastiff valley bulldog. I'll insert a picture up here so that you can see his cute and cuddly face. And today, what I thought instead of just sitting here and talking to you guys is I'm a doer, so I thought let's make some soup because I have this gigantic butternut squash. This guy right here, I actually named him Larry, my friend Larry. So Larry is going to be our test subject today and we're gonna make two soups with three main ingredients each. So let's get into talking about soup and sharing with you three tips for when motivation isn't your friend and what you can do in order to keep on your weight loss journey. So today the two soups that we are gonna make with this here one ingredient is we're gonna do a maple apple butternut squash soup and I'm gonna do a coconut curry butternut squash soup. If you don't know, I actually am a self-taught chef and I was in the cooking industry for 14 years. My dad used to coin me as the tin can in a microwave because I used to make food that was so bad that the dog wouldn't even eat it. So if you're somebody who struggles with saying, I can't cook or I don't know how to cook, I'm really bad at it, I hear you, I feel you, and I promise you that if you stick with me and learn how to cook the way that I do, you can accomplish anything. So for the squash, we're gonna take our knife and we're just gonna cut the ends off of here. It really hurts. I might have to stand up for this. Let's just do that. You guys can deal with it. There we go, one off. I take the other end off here. This is a very, very hard butternut squash. Sorry, Larry at your face. Now, because both of these soups are purees, you don't have to be very fancy with how you cut up your butternut squash. I was on a call with one of my clients and she was talking about how she wishes that she had the motivation and the energy to, to, to eat better, stop eating out, and she just didn't know where to begin and she was getting all confused and she was starting to have a lot of stress and anxiety and what would happen was is that she would just kind of freeze and just be like, I'm not gonna do anything, I can't do anything right now, and she'd just zone out. And this was becoming a repetitive behavior for her, and she wanted to learn how to break it down. So her and I were chatting, and we talked about, you know, what was it that her morning routine looked like? And she said, well, I set the alarm for 6.30 in the morning, and I usually press snooze until 7.30 in the morning, and then I jump out of bed, and we rush to get everything done, get my son to school, and get myself to work by 8.30. And I said, okay, do you want to do that? And she said, well, no, I don't. I, I said, well, what would be ideal for you? And she said, I would love to get up at 6.30 in the morning, have a cup of tea, relax a little bit, kind of have that hour to myself. And I said, okay, so what would that mean if you would have to do something like that? She said, well, I'd have to get up. And I said, okay, so you have two choices. You can either go to bed earlier so that you're not taking your alarm and constantly hitting snooze, or you can say to yourself, okay, I'm gonna go to bed when I go to bed and I'm gonna get up at 6.30 and it doesn't matter if I'm like dog ass tired. No. She continually does this little task of setting up her environment earlier so that she can have this morning time and not feel like she's rushing out the door, then it's gonna set up her day a lot better. We also talked about, she called it time poverty and maybe you guys feel that way too where you just feel like there's just not enough time to get all of the things done that you have to get done. Instead of focusing in on the number on the scale, in order to gauge weight loss. What if we had weight loss as our side effect? What if we set up systems and structures within our daily routine that automatically made weight loss the byproduct of everything that we were doing? So what if we started to improve our morning routines and our evening routines? and stuff where we start planning out our day a little bit better so that it will help us learn how to eat healthier, learn how to move our bodies better. Let me know in the comments below what it is that you struggle with. Do you struggle with trying to create a schedule that's going to help you stick to a healthy habit and a healthy routine? Is that where that big struggle is for you? Or is it maybe that you struggle with finding out how to make food that tastes good, but that's also healthy for you. Or maybe you struggle with both and maybe you need help with both of those things. 
All right, done, chops. We are going to, and I'm gonna put half in each pot. So this is really cool. I'm making two soups at the exact same time, and then I'm gonna put them into containers. Some I'll keep out, and some that I'll just put in the freezer, so then I can have them for lunch later on in the week. Man, that's a lot of squash, this is impressive. Look at that, like that one there is almost full, and so is that one there. We're gonna take a little bit of garlic. Uh, this is one thing you'll have to know about me when it comes to cooking, and this is probably why I'm not a baker, is I don't really measure. I kind of just put some in and figure it out. I had some leftover carrots. You guys don't have to do this. I'm just gonna use up my produce so that it doesn't go to waste. So we're gonna put some carrots in here and carrots in here. So we don't need that there. Pot number one is going to be curry powder. So I'm gonna put some curry powder in. And then I'm gonna put some coconut milk. Give your coconut milk a good shake. Hello, beautiful coconut milk. We will add, if you have vegetable stock, great. If you're not a vegetarian, you have chicken stock, go ahead, put that in. If you don't have any stock whatsoever, just put some water in, it's no big deal. This is the Patax curry paste. And I'm going to put a huge spoonful of that. This stuff too is so good if you smother it on like shrimp and then you grill your shrimp, it is so good. We're gonna put a little bit of vegetable seasoning in this as well. And then that one there is done. It's basically, I'm gonna put some water in it and throw it on the stove. Well, I was talking with this client and she also felt like she was having a difficult time planning meals and shopping and then meal prepping. So she did this, she said a couple of weeks ago where she actually bought all the groceries on a Friday night after work, she went and got all of her groceries. And by the time that she got home, she was just exhausted and she said, forget it. I'm not doing my meal prep tonight. Saturday, she got busy, she didn't do it either. And then she said, oh my God, I can't do this. I literally just bought all of this food and it's gonna go to waste. So she made it so that she had basically no choice and on Sunday she did her meal prep. She said, you know what really helped with the week and I didn't eat out nearly as much. She said, but I did still eat out twice. And I was like, okay, so you ate out twice. What's the big deal with that? And she's like, well, it's really bad. And I said, well, why is it bad? If you ate three meals a day, seven days a week, that's 21 meals. And so you ate out twice. So that means that 19 other times you ate at home. What's wrong with that? Why is it such a guilt that we have for ourselves that if we eat out once or twice a week? So our solution to her feeling like she had more time and more control over what it was that she was eating that was gonna give her a little bit more healthier options and help with the week and her planning and routine and schedule was that I said, okay, through the week, find out what it is that you wanna have for the following week. From Monday to Thursday, plan those out as to what it is that you want. Compile your recipes and your grocery list. And then on Friday, she agreed that she was gonna go grocery shopping. I said, and why don't we have Friday as takeout night? Because groceries are exhausting. I, there is nothing that I hate more than spending $300 on groceries and then coming home and having to cook. Like I'm just, it's not happening. I'm not doing it. So she's going to Friday night, she's going to buy her groceries and then she's gonna go and eat out and enjoy a meal without guilt because she's planned it out. And then on Sunday, she has planned a couple of hours before she goes to bed to have her meal prep done. Because again, Sundays are usually that time in the evenings, you know, late afternoon, the evening, where we're kind of prepping for work anyways. So why don't we kind of have everything laid out for us so that we know what's coming up in the next week. And now the third thing that we did was she had a difficult time scheduling everything that had to be done. All right, pot number two is done. One thing though, I have the apples in here and I got the butternut squash and a little bit of carrots. I don't put the maple syrup in until the end of it being cooked. And the reason why is because I don't know how sweet that butternut squash is. That butternut squash might be super, super sweet. So if I put the maple syrup in at the end, I can control how much of the sugar, even though it's natural, I can still control how much of the sugar is actually going to be put into the pot itself. So I'm just gonna basically boil the boil the hell out of these little suckers until they're soft. And once they're soft, I'm gonna puree them and then I'm gonna season them and then we're gonna package them up, let them cool down and package them up. So back to the client, um, she said that she got really stressed out about how to get all of the tasks and all of the should do's done. So we talked about writing down on a paper of all of the things that she should do. 
Once we know all of the things that we think that we should do, that's when we can really look at it and assess whether or not we actually need to do those things. Deciding what it is that you absolutely need to do as opposed to what it is that you should be doing will really help you focus in on developing a really strong routine and kind of cutting out all of the unnecessary noise and all of that stuff. What I did was I provided her with a print off. You can get this on just Google hourly weekly schedule. So basically it was Monday to Friday and I think it was from like 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. and it was all just these little squares. That was it. And I said, I want you to fill it out. You know every day when you're going to work. You know what time you have to wake up in the morning. And you're gonna fill out the squares as to what needs to be done that day. So if it's work, it's work, right? If it's groceries, you put it into the little square in the time that you're gonna go get groceries. If you wanna go for a hike in the afternoon, put in where your exercise is going then you know what is happening in your schedule. Also, if you have guilt associated with when you wanna have downtime, maybe you just wanna sit down and scroll on your phone. We're all guilty of it. God, it's, it's a bad problem. I have it too. But if I schedule it into my actual routine, then I'm not feeling guilty for it because I know that like, you know what, I'm gonna take a half an hour right now and then I'm gonna be done with it and I'm gonna move on to the next thing that I have on my schedule. So it helps to bring down that overwhelmingness and that anxiety when it comes to thinking that you have to do it all. You figured out what it is that you really need to do and then you figured out the things that you want to do and then you can decide in your schedule where you can put those things. If you are somebody who struggles with finding out how to create a good routine, you can go onto my website. I will leave it in the description below. I can book a call there and we can sit and chat and talk about what's really holding you back from achieving your weight loss goals. All right, soups are done. Sometimes it'll take you three or four times of tasting it and adding and adjusting seasonings. That's why I always layer my seasonings as opposed to putting in all of the salt and all of the pepper at once and then just leaving it. If we kind of put those things at the end, then we can adjust the seasonings to our taste, right? Season to taste. Yep. And there it is. It's just, it hits the back of your throat and it just goes, yep, balance, nice, give me another bite. So I hope you guys like this video. I really enjoy cooking and I'm kind of getting back into it now that the fall season is here. If you have any questions or are looking for any support, check out my website. And if you want to have some coaching on me, check out the link in the description below. I upload new videos every single Wednesday and I will see you back here next week with God knows what. Thank you guys so much and have a beautiful day. Bye.